Okay, so this looks more like the window I was used to. I was in some kind of like streaming window that I didn't like. Hello, everybody. So I, um, you do not see my face today because I've got my new fancy camera to show you how I create fur using a pencil. Um, and I wanted my fancy camera so that you guys can see better what I'm doing. So um, that's why I chose to do it this way. Hey, if you're doing having a great day today, drop me a uh, smiley face. If you're not having a great day, drop me a thumbs down. Let me know what's going on in your life. Um, I am doing fantastic today. It's Friday Eve. Can't be happier. And uh, although, honestly, every day is like a Friday Eve to me. I don't mind my work and I really enjoy being home creating. So I'm pretty lucky that way. I have been working on three of these beautiful dogs, two Goldens and a Golden Doodle, and they are going home the end of this week or the beginning of next week. So before they went home, I wanted to show you guys kind of how I go about creating a softness or fur um, in my pet portrait images. Um, thank you, Clarence. So before I finish this beauty up, I was going to spend a few minutes with you um, and just kind of, this is how I do it. I'm sure there are other people out there who do it slightly different. I cannot um, comment too much while I'm working. So I'll kind of talk my way through it. I'll try to keep it brief. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section. And after my appointments and my work today, I will absolutely jump on and get back to you and answer any questions you have. So this is on hot press watercolor paper. I love working on hot press watercolor paper. The reason why I like it is it's not too smooth. Uh, it's smooth. It's definitely smooth, but it's not too smooth where it doesn't have any grip. Like uh, Bristol smooth paper is almost too slippery for what I want to do with my graphite and charcoal. Um, and then if you get into like charcoal papers themselves, they have too much of a tooth in the paper. So I can't get a really nice smooth transition. So I really love Arches hot press, not cold press, hot press watercolor paper. One of my favorites to work on. I also use it for my colored pencil work. I You can use any sorts of pencils that you want. Um, you can you can use just a number two pencil like you did at school right so we can create beautiful drawings with something that simple i like to use my um my Carandiache graphite pencils they are one of the smoothest brands i found they are very expensive but i absolutely adore them my dog has chewed them do you see this i could kill her sometimes it's a good thing i love her look at look at this she's always after my pencils but um I use these to start. This is kind of like where what I use to kind of get in some, I use them to sketch out my outline, to kind of get in some bigger colors like around the nose. Um, and then as I get down into some details, I go to my mechanical pencils. So I label them so I know what's in them. Um, my mechanical pencils, um, I have the same types of leads, the same leads in them that match my uh, my wood pencils, but then these get, I'm able to get more detailed with the small barrels. So I also will be using today this Mono Zero um, eraser. I love this one because it's so small. Look, look at that tip. So super nice to get into lots of detail, like little furs. Um, you can use any eraser. You can use your kneaded eraser and just create a nice edge with it to create soft white fur. Um, I like this because it's small and I have, I, you can get all kinds of sizes with this tip. Um, very nice. And I usually use the edge of it. So I get a nice, nice, uh, clean line. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So this is how I kind of create that softness is with my erasers. So what I tried to do before, oh, and I always have one of these, my tortillions. Okay. These are just to kind of really really create some some large areas of graphite so the key with fur okay is that it's not just a single line right it is a bunch of strokes 
together. When you look at fur or hair, you want to look at it as not individual pieces of hair or fur, but sections. So you wanna look at the lights and the darks. And this is where people really, really struggle because a lot of times they try to draw hairs. They try to draw like single hairs or single fur. And it's not necessarily like that, especially for me, especially in the beginning, I use this a lot. So I add some graphite to my drawings and then I use this or a stump, which is very similar. And I just kind of create some gray scale on my paper. And the reason why I do this, even with a white dog, is that it's much easier for me to add some, some gray scale. So I'll show you right in this area. I will add some, and I'll show you the photo reference in just a second, but I can add some grayscale here. And then what I can do is take out what I don't want to create fur, right? Now this isn't always the case. Sometimes I'm using all graphite to create fur. I'm not using white, but these happen to be white dogs. So using the eraser works really well. Um, in this case, same with like blondes, using the eraser to pull out blonde strands of hair after you've gotten in this like section of color works really, really well. And I hope I'm explaining that. I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. So I'm not trying to create all these individual pieces of fur right now. I'm just trying to get some graphite onto my paper so it's not the white of the paper so that I can then extract pull off some graphite to create the white fur. So I'll show you. So let's say we do that. Let's get that in, okay? And this is a lot of back and forth. When I create my animals, it's a lot of adding and subtracting, even people. When I do a person portrait, it's a lot of like putting graphite on, pulling graphite off. Um, not because of mistakes, not erasing large spots because I made a mistake, but just I want something on the paper so that I can lift something off and leave behind something delicate, if that makes sense. So if I've got this, let me show you the photo. Um, let me, I gotta mute my phone. Hang on just a second. It's very distracting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I, I have this gray spot. Now here's where I'm working. Here's the little, here's the spot right here. So you can see that there's some gray around the edges, but then there's some lighter grays here, right? And some streaks of white. So to create, and this is not the best photo to work from. Um, so I'm trying to kind of make things up as I go too, to create a texture there. So. Right now, I've, all I've done is kind of created this dark, no, oh, hang on, let me get these kind of side by side so you can see. So, there we go. So right now, I've just created this sort of um, solid kind of gray area. And of course, when I was using my tortillion, I still went in the direction, I made strokes in the direction of the fur. So, um, because I don't wanna make it all crazy. It just, i uh, work against myself then. I don't wanna work against myself ever. So I'm always trying to work in the direction of the fur, even if I'm just putting in a large amount of grayscale. And I'm not really, I'm not really um, fico cheeking as my father-in-law would say, uh, small details yet, but I still wanna work in that direction. Okay, so I get some graphite on there. You have to put graphite down in order to lift the white up. It's easier. So then I could take my little nice eraser, which is a little dirty. So I'm just gonna clean it a little bit and flatten it out. I like a nice edge on it. Um, so to get an edge, I usually just kind of rub it, rub it on a piece of paper back and forth like that. I'm trying to flatten this out and get a nice edge on it. Or you can cut it with an X-Acto knife. You can just slice it. Get these off. But if I don't have an X-Acto knife, that works pretty good. So I don't really want it rounded. I want an edge to it. There we go. So I've got a nice kind of, see that edge? 
It's not perfect, but it's good. So now I can go into my drawing here and kind of start to create these strokes. Now, even when I'm doing that, I'm still kind of overlapping. So one of the things I see a lot of people do, I mean, just, I can't talk and do it at the same time. One of the things I see a lot of people do is they, um, they make a stroke, they'll make a line like that, right? And then they make a line next to it, kind of like this. I call it soldiers. I call it creating soldiers. So they kind of stand the hairs up very uniformly and even, they'll space them out even. Um, they always have them at the same length and it doesn't look natural. Our hair and the way our shadows and our highlights work and our fur and our hair is very organic. So you don't want to create soldiers. What you want to do is take your, take your edge and you just want to start to kind of build up some of these strokes. So I'm just lifting, see that? I'm just lifting graphite out to kind of create this mid-tone here. And the beauty of this is if I don't like it, if it gets too light or I've gotten it too perfect, it's not random enough, I can always go back with my tortillion and knock some of these down. I can go right over them a little bit and knock back some of the, the lightness of it, see that? Or I, I can take it completely out. So see, I don't like it. And the reason why I love doing it this way is I'm not damaging the paper. So I'm very gentle. I'm just very lightly putting these strokes on. I'm not damaging the tooth of the paper. So I can keep going back and forth if I need to. So you can kind of practice a little bit. So what I wanna do is especially in here, you can see these little white strokes. I wanna take, I wanna start to pull some of those out. I rotate the eraser as I'm working, so it's on a clean edge kind of every time. But it's just this kind of back and forth. See that? See how soft that is? It's random. It's organic. And I would build this whole area up that way. So, and like I said, if I get a spot too light, um, not, or, you know, uh, or maybe, yeah, just probably too light, I can go back and knock it back. So I definitely want to keep this darker edge here that goes around the, the jaw here. See that? Because it's darker. But as we come around here, it's these, these white strokes come this way, but there's still some value that's deeper into this little spot because we're starting to turn away from the light here. So when I come down here, I can pull more of my strokes out here. I can make it a little whiter. following my picture, and then I can start to curve up this way just a little bit. Oops, let me give you guys, let me bring this down a little bit so you can see it better. So I can start to very lightly, I don't want to take too much grayscale off here because it's a little bit darker there. But I can start to pull some of these out and kind of meet them up into this little section. I overlap my strokes. I'm, I'm very lightly touching the paper. I'm not really pushing down on my eraser. Um, and I'm just kind of gauging my picture as I go, making sure I'm getting it as close as I can. It doesn't have to be exact. That's another thing about fur and hair that I love is that it does not have to be perfect because it is organic. So you don't have to get the placement of every single piece of hair. So that makes it really, really nice. But I see some pretty good strokes in here. So if I want, I'm gonna go in and pull some of those out. I always lift up. And the reason why I do that, um, same when I'm doing strokes with my pencil, is I want a nice tapered edge on my fur or my hair. I don't want a blunt edge on it. That's not how hair works. So um, I'm always kind of lifting. I, you can't see it, but I'm always lifting my eraser or my pencil up. I start down and then I lift up. If you get a hair or a piece of fur that's too blunt, you can go back with your pencil and just taper it off. 
So, so we've got a little start there. See that, how we're starting to pull some of these hairs forward by lightening them up. And we're pushing back the darker areas, which gives it some depth. And I would actually work on this little area for a while. So I would push and pull my fur until I get a real nice softness and grayscale uh, value that I'm happy with. Now, I am definitely lifting my eraser and I'm curving because this is on a curved plane right here. This is not a straight up and down surface. This from here to this backside, that's why there's a shadow here, is curved, right? Does that make sense, I hope? So we don't want to just go straight this way. We want to curve it so that it follows the body, the structure. So that's the other thing you want to kind of remember. So I can just kind of go in here and start pulling these little hairs out and I'm making him look more like a white dog than a um, beige golden, right? He's a pretty light dog. So in the end, he's gonna be pretty white. He's gonna have a lot of strokes, white hairs taken out. Now, as I come around down here, like I said, as we go down around that mouth area over here, this gray comes up a little higher. So I don't wanna take that down all the way to, um, so then what I do, okay, so I do this, right? I might get a couple of these in here just to kind of pull some wispy furs out. And then I would take my pencil, and this is where I bring my mechanical pencils in. I would take my pencil and come back in and add some darker pieces of fur. So I don't have my little, I usually have a little paintbrush to clean all the eraser marks off, but I don't right now. So then I can take my two, I'll just use a 2H for now, my 2H mechanical pencil. And I can come in, see, and right, like right here, it got a little white. So I can just start here and same stroke, lift up. And I can vary the length. And I'm kind of keeping my strokes close together. I don't want to create little soldiers. I don't want to see all these little pieces of hair, but more, um, I want to see more of a section of fur. So I can come in here and just create that. Bump this up a little bit. So that the gray just like so. And again, if it gets too dark again, I can go back in with my eraser and pull some out. So I'll just kind of now right in here, it gets pretty dark. So I'm going to switch to my other mechanical pencil that has a darker lead, a softer lead. A softer lead will be darker. Um, and I can come in here and curl this up. Now here, I do kind of want to create more individual pieces of fur because I've got some white fur kind of coming over this. So by just creating some small, I don't know if you can see that, just some small dark areas, I've created some little white furs that come over it. Um, and then I can go ahead and pull some more out over here. So we can kind of enhance the area down here. It's a little darker. So I can go ahead and enhance that and darken it up. So starts to create that over here, this little edge, right? Now, if I feel like it got too thick or too um, detailed here, I can go back to my eraser, grab the edge of it, and just pull some of these out. So I could just kind of very lightly go over them and dull them down and soften them up. 
just like that. So super easy. So I kind of sculpt the areas just like this throughout, just kind of a back and forth with the pencil and the eraser until I get it where I'm really, really happy with it. Um, so like right here, I do want to pull just a couple more hairs out this way. So actually, this is like my favorite part. This is like, I've, I've kind of sculpted the dog, kind of laid out where I want his his shadows, his values, and then getting into this detail. Mm, I just love it. I could just sit here for hours back and forth creating this. So like right up in here along this nose edge, right in here, this is really, really dark. So I would go in here and really start into using my, my, um, mechanical pencil I'm going to start to create this edge here so I just want to make sure I'm getting it in the right spot kind of comes down around this part this is all kind of really dark and then I can start to pull some some hairs down from that edge um, kind of start to create that little now notice I'm doing some shorter strokes and then I'll do a long one. Shorter, long. I want it to be random. I do not want it to be perfectly symmetrical. That's not good. It's stiff, people will see it. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be exactly like the picture. As long as you're in the general area when it comes to fur, the placement and stuff is good. Nobody's going to notice if there's one white hair that's longer sticking out than another from the photo. They're just, they're not going to see that. So now say I want to go in here. This is pretty dark. So say I want to lift just a little bit of fur in here, make it look like there's a little bit of, of uh, maybe a whisker or something like that. I could do a couple things. I can use a kneaded eraser. And, and make a nice edge, but I don't have it with me right now. And actually that's what I would do because it doesn't take off as much as this might. This isn't as, um, a kneaded eraser just kind of glides a little differently where this is gonna be more of a harder edge, but I'm gonna try it. But I can go in here and just kind of pick at, like right here, let's try to put this little white stroke in here. So I can try to go in here, get an edge on it and just kind of, pick that white up. There's quite a bit of um, graphite in this area, so I had to go over it once or twice. But there you go. Now I've got a little stroke there. And again, I can, I can tighten this, make it skinnier by going back in with my mechanical pencil if I want to. So then I'm going to create another one. <coughs> but this time, I'm going to create it coming like a, a little bit uh, not this way, but down a little bit, just to kind of give it um, some depth. Like maybe a hair is overlapping another hair. So again, lots of graphite. So I have to stroke this a couple times. A little more pressure. And that's why I don't like to use this particular eraser in this area. It would work much better to use a um, kneaded eraser. Because I could go over that a couple times without creating um, too chunky of a hair. So I don't have mine with me right now. But there we go. So now that I've got that one kind of pointing down. And then I can kind of come in here. And let's see if we can create one going up this way. Just get a couple different ones in here. So... They don't have to be perfect. Just some lighter ones. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, put one in here. One coming this way. I'm going to knock this back just a little bit. This 
So just kind of building up some texture, really. Like that. So we've got that kind of going. I don't like the way this one looks right here. So I can come back in with my mechanical pencil and really just thin it out. I can take some of that edge off. Just like that. Same with here. And again, like I said, it would have worked much better in this area using a um, using my kneaded eraser. So I would recommend that. But there. So I, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it looks kind of cool. Like I cleaned up some of these edges. I've got some depth going. So I've got a really good start at this area here. I have a lot of work yet to do. I gotta I gotta finish the nose and stuff, but I can focus in this section for a little while. So like down here, I can go back to my 2H and pull some of these hairs back up into the white just to kind of create um, more depth. So we don't want it perfect. I'm just keeping the strokes tight together, random, some short, some long, um, and kind of creating sections of dark and white. So see how that works? So down here I can, and again, I can go back in with my eraser. Right up in here, I want to kind of come up and create some in here. And um, I'm really just kind of skimming the surface of the paper uh, because this is such a light area. I'm not putting a lot of pressure down. You shouldn't have to put pressure down when you're drawing. You should be using your different leads to get darknesses and lightness. Um, that way you're not damaging your paper, the layers in your paper. And that's why I can keep doing this. I can keep going over it and back and forth because I'm not doing damage to it. I'm not scrubbing at it. It's just slow. Just take, have patience. But you can see how this area starts to build up. So if I feel like I've lost some of my white, I can go back to my eraser and really start to pull some more of these out. And I'm, again, I'll vary the way these go. They go up, they go down, sideways. They always kind of stay in the same direction, but some might overlap others. And it starts to build up that fur and starts to have that texture to it. Now, something that um, what I really want to do is make this look like this part is forward. So I want to give it more of a rounded look because right now it's still looking just a tad flat. So if I lighten the, the middle here with my eraser and get that to pop forward. Anything light will pop forward. Anything dark will recess. So if I can get this to kind of pop forward a little bit, this is where shadows and highlights help create dimension. So if I get that like that, um, I can then start to, I'm going to use my stump now and just in spots kind of pull this around. bring it up and then over here I want to pull some of this out just a bit I don't want to lose everything I just did but I'm just kind of building it up again, building up and taking back a little back and forth. 
So I'm just trying to get this area to look as close to this area as I can until um, I'm satisfied. And once I'm satisfied, I go on to the next section. So it's a lot of just this kind of back and forth. So I hope that helps, guys. I hope I uh, gave you some, gave you a couple answers. Just go try it. You don't need to have a dog face to do it. Just try doing like a little section of hair. Um, I just want to create a couple more lines here. I have to do up here yet. I've got, I've noticed that between the nose here and here is too wide compared to the picture. So I need to take care of this. I got to fix this edge here. It's got to come in more. It's got to come in more like if this is coming up. It's probably more like this. This comes down, this comes down, maybe in here, maybe more like that. I need to shorten up, and I know that this will have some fur here, um, so that I'll shorten up this, this edge, these two edges. I need to fix that. So I'm going to jump off and take care of that. Um get that more like the I'm not sure what happened I think it's somewhere in here this whole structure here needs to be I need to rework it so I'm going to play around with that a little bit um, you'll start to notice things like that as you um, start to add your values you'll see where you need to make adjustments um, and that's perfectly fine so if you haven't laid down two too heavy of strokes you can erase it and kind of fix what you need to so that's always important that's why I work very light too and in layers because you can catch things before it's too late <laughs> not always but most of the time before it's too late so I'm just getting the little dark strokes around the nose there and then I would come back in again with the eraser and break them up kind of like that just like so so bring this up just always paying attention to um, The direction of the hair like that's super super important that's harder to fix I think and anything else I need to break some of this up it's too uniform in here right so starting to get some fur so you can stay on with me if you want I'm just gonna spend a couple more minutes uh, but that's that's pretty much it so if you have questions like I said go ahead and drop them in I gotta erase this this is just too thick here drop them in the comment section and I will get back to you and so this comes in here it kind of comes in a little bit and then back out yeah. so I'll redraw that like that and then it pops out over here but something's going on up in here I'm not sure I'm not sure what I gotta take a look at that so this needs to kind of come this way Well, you know what? Let me grab, let me grab something. I'll show you how you can kind of measure things. Um, so, here's kind 
of an easy way to measure something. So if you're kind of stuck, uh, you can take um, your compass, any compass, even like, you know, cheap school one will do. You can stick it on the side of the nose here and figure out where this, this little bump out is. So right about there. So and if I stick this on the end of my nose, well, let me just make sure. Okay, so that's that outside. Okay, so approximately there. So my bump out is somewhere in here. So I can mark that and that's about where that should be. So I'm not too far off. So let's see where this is. So this, let's pull this in. If it's straight across about there. Right? So if I go in the same spot, about there. Yeah, see how far off that is? So this is where this should be coming in, in here. So let me, let's fix that. So it's more like that. And it's going to come out this way. So, so this is wrong. So that's wrong. Now that looks better. That thickness looks better once I get some shadow in there. And then this is going to come in here. So, so this is about right there. It's going to come in. It wasn't too far off like that, but it's got to come over like right about here maybe. Probably more like that. So that means this, oh, I see it here. So this triangle needs to come way back in, more in here. And this needs to come up like this, more in like that. So, yeah, I think that'll look better. And then it's going to, I'll measure this, but then this is going to bump back out somewhere in here. Like that, ish, <laughs> ish. And then this somehow is going to come up this way, but I got to figure out where that's measuring. So let's see if I go from the same spot on the nose. So I've got a hole here, so I can see it. I've got a hole in both spots. Uh, right there. So let's say I go straight out to this ear part. Make sure that that's right around that area. This is not super, super accurate, but it can help if you get stuck. It can kind of help guide you. Um, yeah, see my ear, it looks like I must have moved it at some point. It should be there. So I can then, it looks like I've got it here, but not quite that like that. And then this is going to come up. And then this does come back out this way. A little bit more like that. So that looks better. So I'll go in and work those areas again, um, kind of fix some spots. This should not be here. This is off a little bit. So just some quick fixes, not a big deal, but at least, you, you know, we can catch it early. So, and it's never going to be perfect. We are, you know, humans, we're going to make mistakes. So, and that's the beauty of the drawing. Um, I don't want it to be, I want it to be close to the, uh, the portrait. I don't want it to be exact. I want it to have a little bit of my personality and my movement in it. So I don't want to be a machine. 
So getting it close is good. And now that, I, now that I'm talking to you guys, I actually can see something else. What I do a lot when I'm drawing is I step away because I just see I brought this in like this when really it curves this way, right? Do you see that? So it should be more like this. So I can fix that. Now I'll, I'll walk away from it for a little bit and then I can come back and make any more tweaks I need to and any changes. And then um, I think we'll be really good to go. So thanks for joining me, you guys. Went a little longer than I wanted, but I hope it was helpful. Okay, if you have questions, drop me the questions and I'll talk to you later.